I want to thank everyone who has logged in today. Before we get started, I'd like to introduce myself. I am Stephanie Somerville from the OzIMM. Um, I'm the Senior Coordinator here in the Professional Development Team and we've been um, organising some webinars. So today we have our one hour webinar on personal and career branding by Shirley Ann Fortina. Uh, Shirley Ann is the Director of POD Consultancy and is a facilitator, trainer, business development coach, speaker and author. She's really passionate about helping individuals and businesses improve individual performance, energise management and team, build effective communication skills and um, develop more productive client relationships. Shirley loves to promote POD's People, Opportunity and Development motto um, and she does this by supporting and cultivating personal and professional talents in others. So I'd like to pass over the reins to Shirley and she will um, present on personal and career branding. Welcome to this session on personal and career branding. I've got so much that I'd like to, to take you through today, so I'm sure that you're going to have some questions at the end of the session. Now, I'm going to be speaking quite quickly, so if at any stage it is going too quickly, just hop onto the chat section and let, let me know that I need to slow things down a bit. And as Steph mentioned, I'm passionate about the topic that I'm presenting on today, so I, I, I tend to get excited and and start um, going off into and at a fast pace. So please feel free to slow me down. So when we look at personal career branding, the first thing I'd like to, to start off with is my, my models that I use, my pod model. And it's really looking at two areas of, of you and your business. So the pod model, at the top you'll see there's vision, there's values, there's purpose. And as in, as an individual, we need to have vision, values and purpose and as a business, we need to have vision, value and purpose. Then you'll see it's brand you, it's personal, which is all about you, you as an individual taking time out to work on you so that you can be the best person you can be, then everyone and everything around you benefits. Then there's brand you, it's business, which is really looking at the client and everything about the client and taking time out to understand your client, all off a foundation of phenomenal communication. Communication is our key enabler and we often don't put much thought into how we communicate. So we'll be talking quite a bit about communication and the impact that that has on your brand, your reputation and thus your career progress and development. Then there are four steps and three questions. The four steps we're going to go into and the three questions we're going to go into and it's really important that we, we make sure that we take time out to, to, to work on ourselves as opposed to just going through the day to day. So many of you would have heard the saying that we, we need to stop and work on the business as opposed to in the business from a business perspective. But when it comes to you as an individual, it's no different. We all need to stop and take time out to work on ourselves, work out where it is that we're heading to as opposed to just being that hamster running on the wheel at that very, very fast pace of life. It's very important that we have a balanced approach from a wheel of life perspective as an individual and then there's the wheel of business where we look at the, the important aspects that we need to take into consideration. So that gives you an overview of the model that I operate um, out of and everything I do fits into and around this model. Now today is all about you and that's, that's where we're heading. So what's on the cards? So we're going to be looking at your brand, your value and, and what we mean by that. We're going to be taking you through the four steps of Brand You and I'm going to be posing lots of questions and, and some of them you may have no answers to at this point in time, but hopefully what you'll do is go away and, and consider these questions. Um, the, the four P's of leadership brand will come into the mix and you, you, are, you are an individual who is a leader in their own right. You may not be in a leadership position within an organization, but you still are, are a leader, so we'll be looking at the concepts of that. Communication plays a big part. As I mentioned, that's your key enabler. We're going to be looking at your networks and the different types of networks that you have and how you need to leverage those. Then one, one really, really important aspect 
which we will go into is your energy and how you manage your energy because that then loops back into what you bring to the environment that you're going into. And finally, we're going to look at some actions and not just um, talking about things but actually putting some action behind the talk. So that's what's on the cards for this session. So to start off with personal branding. The, the, often I, I, I ask people in an open forum when I'm presenting in front of them, you know, have you ever thought of yourself as a walking, talking brand? So you are a walking, talking brand. Now when you think about it, when you front up in person, you are going to be judged whether you like it or not within three to ten seconds on how you present. So you're obviously going to take how you present yourself in the context and the environment that you're going into. So the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you dress, the way you communicate in person, over the phone, via social media, all is building or breaking the brand. Now some of you may have not even thought of yourself as a brand and all of you already have a brand. So stopping and taking a step back to think, oh, what does my brand look like and feel like if I were to start analysing it? Now your brand is your promise of value. So when you think of your, of, of your value that you bring, it could be in the, on the home front, it could be on the business front, it could be in the community. So w what is your promise of value? What value do you bring? Not what you do, but the value in what you do. So we're going to explore that in a lot more detail. And then finally, take a moment now to write down three words to describe your brand. So if you had to think of what three words would I use to describe my brand at this moment in time, what would they be? How would I explain my brand? What kind of descriptive words might I use? Now for some people this is quite challenging and that's okay. At the end of this session I'd like you to certainly take some time out and reflect on this if you haven't managed to get three ideas, words, descriptive words as to your brand as it stands now. So from a branding perspective the way I look at a brand is through four steps and these all make up you and, and your brand. So the first thing that you need to do is self-reflect. You need to stand firm in and know who you are. What are your goals? What are your dreams? What are your aspirations? If you think of the vision, what is your vision for yourself as an individual? And it's really important that you consider this for you in the first instance because I like to use the analogy of driving a bus. You are driving your own bus. You have to have your hands firmly on the wheel and you need to be thinking where do I want to go. Now of course you're going to have to take into consideration a number of other things in terms of where your bus is going and who you're going to have on the bus with you. But first and foremost you need to have both of your hands on the wheel of your, your life bus. So your career, you need to be owning your career, you need to be owning your life. So who am I? What are my goals, my dreams, my aspirations? What's, what are my values? And your, your values are your guiding principles. When you think of values, what, what they are doing is, is they, that they are there to help us inform us of what to do, what not to do. And they are the cornerstone to you committing to your life goals and your work goals. And when you set a, a, a goal for yourself, and an, an objective for yourself and they don't fit in with your value system, the chances of you being successful in achieving those are going to be reduced because if your values are not aligned to what you're trying to do, you, you compromise yourself. So the big question is what do you value in your life? And they are the, the, the feelings, the characteristics, the, the, the things that are really, really important to you. So, so some examples of what your values might look like or, or be, they, they might be community, competition, cooperation. You might have um, ethical um, ethics as a value, honesty, integrity, inspiration. You might have something like loyalty. Optimism might be something that you value. You might have um, the, the, you wanting pleasure, you wanting to have safety, security, you wanting to have status, it might be something like stability. 
and one of the companies that I've recently worked for, they had four values for their business and they had clear direction, fresh thinking, excellent service and great people. So organizations that you work for are going to have a vision, organizations you work for are going to have values, in other words the guiding principles of how they want you to behave working in the business. And then if you think of yourself as an individual, you need to really work out what your personal values are so that you can then be comfortable and know the type of organization environment that you're going into that you're going to have a good fit, a good match. Now will your personal values cross over 100% with an organization that you're working for's values? Maybe, maybe not. But if you have a lot of them crossing over, that's going to bode well for you. And I'll, I'll come back to that in, 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 a, in a while. Then the other thing from a self-reflection perspective is what is your purpose? What's your why? So step one to understanding yourself is going through that, that, that self-reflection. Step two is your transferable skills. Now the way I like to look at transferable skills is if you open up a toolbox, so if you can all visualize this toolbox in front of you, and if you open up this toolbox, on the one side of the toolbox you've got technical skills and what might those look like and feel like. And then on the other side of the toolbox, you've got these softer skills, which are usually the harder skills to, to, to develop. And when you think of these softer skills, they, they, could be, they could be a number of things like the ability to delegate, um, the ability to listen, the ability to negotiate, teamwork, creative thinking, effective communication. So, so those are all the softer skills that you need. So when, you, when you're looking at your transferable skills, this is where your resume comes into play, your master CV, your master resume. And what I like to encourage people to do is to create their, their ultimate, their master document where they put absolutely everything into it. So if you think back to what your first job ever was, and in my case I was a checkout a checkout person and if you go back a number of years to your first job and then you start working towards your current position and you think of all the different jobs that you've had and then for each job you would have required you would have been required to perform a number of tasks and all those tasks that you were required to perform you would have had to have had a number of skills to perform that particular task so when you start looking at how many skills you have in your toolbox, you will find that you have a phenomenal number of skills, but you've probably just never opened up the toolbox and had a really good look in there. So if you take your resume and you dump it into a Word document and you add a couple of extra columns alongside it and you add in next to the various roles that you had, what tasks did I have to perform? What skills did I um, what skills did I need to perform that task? As you go through all the way back to your first ever role, you will then get a sense of a number of duplicate skills that start popping up. Now, if you take your last two roles that you've that you've been in, and you give yourself a score in terms of how sharp are those tools, how how sharp are they at this moment in time? What you do is you say to yourself, okay, on a scale of one to five, one being they're not very sharp at this point, or a five, I'm certainly rocking at the skill at this point in time. You then rank the last two roles, jobs that you've been in, and all those task skills, you, you rank them into one to five. Now, the reason why you're wanting to get a really good handle of, on, your, on your skills is is it starting to build the base for the questions that we're going to go into a little bit later and this is you understanding where you are at at this moment in time. Now there's a story about a, a woodcutter chopping down a tree and some of you have, may have heard this story before so if you have it's, it's, it's going to be a reminder for you. But there's this woodcutter in the forest chopping down some trees and he, he, he's been chopping down trees for quite some time and he's exhausted and this passerby comes through and, and starts talking to him and he says, oh, I can see you, you're looking very tired and you've been hard at it and you, you've got all these trees to chop down, why don't you stop, take a rest and sharpen your axe and um, have a chat with me and then you can get back to chopping down your trees. And the woodcutter looks at the passerby and says, I can't stop at this moment. I've got too many trees to chop down, so I need to get on with it. 
Now the moral of the story here is that often we're so busy in it, doing it, that we don't stop and think, how can I work at the skill set to develop it so that it becomes sharper, so that I can get through more, become more effective, communicate more effectively, whatever it might be, by stopping and taking that step back to sharpen up those skills, those tools for what, I, for what I'm going to be needing to, to use them for. So transferable skills is your second step. So we've self-reflected, we've now done an analysis and we've worked out what's in our transferable skills toolbox and we've created an ultimate resume with absolutely everything in it. Our third step that we go into is looking at a SWOT analysis. Now many have used the SWOT analysis through their studies or in a working environment. And when we think about the, the SWOT, it actually came out um, in the 1960s and the 1970s by a guy called Albert Humphrey. And it was as a result of Stanford University using data from Fortune 500 companies. And the SWOT, when you think about strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats, is a fantastic tool that we can use to work out where, where are things at now. So as an individual, when you're thinking about your personal and your career brand, you need to stop, take that step back and think, okay, what are my strengths? What are the areas that I need to develop? What are the opportunities that are open to me? And what might my threats be? Now the strengths and the, the weaknesses are what we call internal factors. And these are factors that you have control over. So therefore you can put a plan of action in place and do something about them. The opportunities and threats are what we call external factors. Now these are factors that are outside of your control. And when you, when you consider, your, consider it being outside of your control, that there are things like the political, economic, social, technological, legal, environmental factors that impact. So you have no control over those, but what you do have control over is how you react to those. And how you react has a huge impact on how people perceive you. So your SWAT, you want to sit back and think to yourself, okay, well, what are my strengths? What are my qualifications? W what are those skills that I have that stand out, that are at the full five out of fives in terms of sh be being sharp? What experience and specialist knowledge do I have? What do I do well? What, what are my key personality traits that are, are strengths of mine? When you look at the areas to develop, is there anything that's holding me back? Do I have any gaps in the skills, in, in, that, in that transferable skill toolbox? What knowledge or, or qualifications or experience am I lacking potentially? And is there anything that I should be avoiding? Are there any personality traits that I have which might be holding me back? And do I have the right amount of work experience for, for what I'm looking to, to do? So strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and this links into those, those goals, those dreams, those aspirations in terms of your self-reflection, that, you, you, that, that self-reflection step. What, what areas can I work on, improve on that becomes an opportunity? Um, what are the possibilities within the current place of, of work that I'm in? What are the opportunities external to my current place of work? What are the opportunities for me if I'm taking time out having children to get back into the workforce on a part-time basis, on a full-time basis? What if I take a sabbatical? What are the opportunities associated with something like that? Threats. From a threats perspective, we need to think, well, what obstacle or roadblocks might there be? What challenges and changes to income, events, technology, legislation might impact on me? Could I have any weaknesses that could seriously threaten me and, and, and threaten the position that I might be in? And then are there any other external influences that I need to take into consideration? For example, it could be health, it could be family reasons, it could be other things that could threaten my, my, my current situation. So from a SWOT, we really need to stop, take a step back and do a full analysis of ourselves. And what we want to stand firmly on are, are our strengths. And if I had to say to you right this minute, can you tell me what your top five strengths are right now, would you be able to give me an answer? 
what are your top five strengths now? And then if I said to you, could you give me an example to showcase that strength? So if you said to me, one of my strengths is analysis, I'm, a, um, I'm excellent at analysing work. And then I'd say to you, well, what example can you give me to showcase that that's a strength? So you would then need to be able to explain how analysis is one of your strengths and, and give a practical example of how you can take a whole bunch of information, synthesize it, analyze it, and come up with the key aspects that are, are relevant to the objective of why you've done that analysis in the first place. So when you think strength, you want to be able to off the top of your head, be able to say what your, at a minimum, top five strengths are, and then you need to be able to give an example associated with those strengths. The other thing with strengths that I'd like to highlight is, um, is by way of a story, and I love quotes and stories. And this was originally written by a guy called George Rivas back in the 1940s. And there's a, a fabulous website blog called Better Life Coaching Blog. That's www.betterlifecoachingblog.com. And I, I got this um, blog story a number of, of months ago, and, and I love it because it's so, it, it's so true to what we need to do in terms of leveraging our strengths. So I'm going to read this to you. Once upon a time, the animals decided that they should do something meaningful to meet the problems of the new world. So they organized a school. They adopted an activity curriculum of running, climbing, swimming, and flying. And to make it easier to administer, all of the animals took all of the subjects. The duck was excellent at swimming. In fact, he was better than his instructor. However, he made only passing marks in flying and was very poor at running. Since he was so slow in running, he had to drop his swimming class and do extra running. This caused his webbed feet to become badly worn, meaning that he dropped to an average mark in swimming. Fortunately, Average was acceptable, so therefore nobody worried about it except the duck. The rabbit started at the top of the class in running, but developed a nervous twitch in his leg muscles because he had so much makeup work to do in swimming. The squirrel was excellent in climbing, but he encountered constant frustration in flying class because his teacher insisted that he start from the ground up instead of the treetop down. He developed cramps from overexertion, so he ended up with a C in climbing and a D in running. The eagle was a real problem student and was severely disciplined for being a nonconformist. In climbing class, he beat all of the others to the top, but insisted on using his own way of getting there. The principle here is that each of us have our own strengths. We need to work hard to maximize them, not handicap our potential by becoming good at something that isn't natural for us. So we need to think about who are the ducks, who are the rabbits, who are the squirrels, who are the eagles, and how we can best utilize our skills and strengths rather than trying to get the same level of average out of all of them. So when you're thinking SWOT analysis, human nature is to go large in the weakness, go large in the threats, and not focus and leverage those strengths and opportunities. And it's really important that we understand what our strengths are and we maximize and leverage those. And I, I love that story written by George Rivas because I think it's so true. We need to embrace those strengths and use them. So we've considered self-reflection. We've thought about transferable skills. We now have a really good understanding of our strengths, weaknesses, our opportunities, and threats. The fourth step of you and your brand is your value proposition. Now, you often, when you meet someone new for the first time, get asked who you are and what you do. And you might have heard of the concept of your elevator pitch. And your elevator pitch is really your value proposition. And there are a, a number of steps to, to thinking, thinking about and thinking through your value proposition. What a lot of people do when they communicate with you is they tell you what they do instead of what's the value in what they do. And I'm going to loop back to the concept of value proposition a little bit later. But value proposition is really important because you need to be able to drill down to your underlying value. So if you're applying for a role and they say to you, well, why should we employ you for this role? 
you need to be able to come up with what value you are going to bring to the role, not just regurgitate back to those interviewing you that you can do all of the key things that they ask you to do. You need to say to them, I can bring value in this way. So what I mean by your value proposition is if you say, I'm a general manager of an area, or I am an analyst, or I am an, an executive assistant, or I am an engineer, whatever your, your role title is, if I had to say, so, so what's the value in that? You're going to come back to me with a statement. That statement that you come back with, you write that down, and then you ask yourself the question, so what is the value in that? You write down your answer to that, and you repeat this process four or five times. And eventually, you'll drill down to the true underlying value. And then when someone asks you, what value can you bring, that final statement that you came up with is the statement that you would then use and then work backwards. Now, Steph is going to be my guinea pig to demonstrate this for you over, over this webinar. And we're going to have a conversation. So we're going to be going back and forth between us. And I'm going to be asking her about her title. And then we're going to drill down. And then we're going to play it back so you can get a sense of what we're looking to do here before we move on into the remainder of the webinar. Steph, hopefully you're ready for this. Yes, I am. Okay. So, Steph, if you could tell me what is your job description or your job title? I am the Senior Coordinator for Pro Professional Development for the AusIMM. Senior Coordinator for Professional Development for AusIMM. Okay. So, what's the value in you being the Senior Coordinator for Professional Development for AusIMM? What value do you bring? Um, <laughs> I, um, part of my role is to assist my manager, Zan Weber, but also part of my role is to create uh, professional development opportunities for the members of the AusIMM. So with the professional development opportunities, so what's the value in that? The value in that is the members, uh, they pay to be a member of the AusIMM and we're a service organisation and not for profit. So we want to provide um, learning and professional growth opportunities for our members to, um, so they can continue to grow in an industry that is um, evolving. So what is the value of the learning and professional growth development opportunities? Why, why, what's the value in that? The, the value in that is um, in creating these opportunities for the members is so they are continually learning and they are then adding value to the minerals industry. So they add value to the minerals industry. So I'm just writing all of this down as Steph's been talking to me. So if, if you take what I've done, I've asked her what her role is, and then I've asked her to tell me what value she's provided, and each time she's told me one area, I've, if, if I ignore the assistant manager function, I go into the creating the professional development um, function, and then I've asked her, so what's the value in that? And then I've, she's given me an answer, so what's the value in that? And we've drilled down by asking the question, so what is the value in that? So what I'm hearing, as a senior coordinator for professional development for us IMN, you are actually investing in the minerals community and industry. And by doing how, how you're doing that is by creating learning opportunities to add value to your members. So you do that by providing learning and professional development um, online and in various formats so that through your not-for-profit service that you provide, you're investing back into the business, back into the individuals, back into the community, so overall that the minerals industry benefits. So when you take, thanks very much Steph, so when you take the value proposition concept, 
you break it down and you play around with your value proposition. So you might have a value proposition that you use internally, you might have a value proposition that you use externally and, and it will change and adjust depending on who your audience is. But by writing it down and working it out and then playing it back, it has a huge impact on how you come across. And how you come across is critically important because perception is created within three to 10 seconds and thereafter you either reaffirm that initial perception or you move in the opposite direction. And what you're wanting to do with your personal value proposition is have it written out, test it on a couple of people and then use it ad wall wherever you are and about, but you don't want to learn it rote so that you come across as a robot. You just want to have the structure and the ideas that you can pull through. So you stopping and taking a step back and working out who you are, where you're going, goals, dreams, aspirations, what's, what, what your values are, what's important to you, understanding what's in your toolbox and how sharp those tools are and creating that ultimate resume that you can pick and choose from whenever you want to and that should be an ongoing thing. You've looked at your SWOT analysis with a key emphasis on your strengths and you've now got a value proposition that you can use when you step out and you're talking to different people. So I'd like to move on to these three questions. And these three questions you use in business and you use as individuals. So where am I at now? Where am I at now within my life, within my career? And what am I, what am I bringing in my SWOT and bringing in my skills analysis and bringing in my value proposition? Where is that all at now? Then I think to myself, okay, well, where am I going to? Where am I wanting to, to, to head? And if I say, okay, I'm wanting to head to a new career, I'm wanting to head into a promotion, I'm wanting to go back into the workplace. You've then got a natural gap that opens up. So you can see the gap between the where now and the where to opens up. And then you've got to say to yourself, okay, how am I going to close that gap, but close it in a way that's SMART. Now you may be familiar with the SMART acronym when you're communicating in a smart way, setting goals and actions in a smart way, you are more likely to get the message across and achieve what it is you're looking to achieve. So what does smart mean? Smart is specific, measurable, achievable, realistic slash relevant, and time bound. So I'll say that again, smart, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, relevant, time bound. And what we want to do is close that gap in a smart way. And we need to be mindful that we don't take on too much too quickly. If you think about one thing you could do each month to, to focus on over a period, if you, if you map in your career over say the next 12 to 18 months, if you just chose one thing a month to, to focus your energies and efforts on, how different would you be in 12 months time and how much closer would you be in terms of quality going towards your goals and actions that you're putting in place? So as an individual, as a business, where am I at now? Where am I going to? And then how am I going to get there? Now for some people they really battle with the where to and that's going to be different for everybody based on your personal circumstances. Now you may have come across a concept called the wheel of life before and what the wheel of life is, it's getting you to create a wheel and all the different spokes of the wheel will give you the key areas of your life that you feel are really important. So from a well of life perspective, you could have things in there, for example, like health, you could have family, you could have partner, you could have friends, relationships, you could have personal space, you could have finance, you could have sleep as one of the, the areas in your will of life. So these are the really, really important things to you in your life. And then what you need to think about is from a where to perspective, 
is what are the things you're passionate about that you really enjoy doing that you find yourself in the zone where you lose all sense of time and and you you, you switched on and you're leveraging all those strengths that you have or a number of those strengths that you have what are you doing when that happens and then you've got to be thinking to yourself is the role that I'm in a role that I can have switching on and using all those strengths and, and that I'm passionate about and if not what kind of role can I explore? Now the government put out a bull's eye document to help students leaving school to to figure out where they might want to go. And this bull's eye document, I will send the link to Stephanie to add at the end of the, the webinar when it comes out to you to, to give you a link in to, to go and have a look at this document. And it's got so many different um, career ideas and the, the skills and, and the qualities and capabilities that you need to go into that career and you might then be able to use that to help you if you're searching for where to. You might know where you're wanting to go to and that's fine. The question is what steps do you need to take to get there and do you need to take sideways steps? Do you need to go straight up to where you're wanting to go? and taking into account your whole of life, your work-life integration. So you need to be thinking, when I do something in one area of my life, it's going to have a knock-on impact into another area. So if I take health, if you don't have health working for you, if, 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 you're, if, you, if you are not looking after yourself, that is going to have a negative knock-on impact into your working opportunities, into your energy levels, into your relationship, it's going to have a negative impact into everything. If, for example, your wealth, your finance aspects, if you are looking to, to change jobs and change environments, you've got to assess your whole, of, um, your whole of your wheel of life before you make that jump so that you don't compromise your financial position. So what I'm saying here is look at where you're at now think about your strengths, think about what's in your toolbox, think about your value proposition. Where do I want to go to? How big a jump? How big a gap? Is it achievable? How can I get there in a smart way? And then put an, a plan of action in place to get there. Now you may change your mind along the way as to where you're going to and that's quite okay. You recalibrate your goals, you recalibrate the smart setting to then get you back on track to where you want to go. So four steps, three questions. Communication is your key enabler that builds and breaks brand. And what a number of us do is assume that we're phenomenal communicators, just like many of us um, assume that we're phenomenal drivers. Now when you think of communication, what I'd like you to do is think about what it does for your brand. What kind of a communicator are you? What kind of brand and, and, and presence do you think you, you bring to the environments that you're going into? If someone had to say, what kind of a communicator are you, what might they say? Aggressive, passive, assertive, too loud, too soft, don't listen, don't communicate well. What kind of a communicator are you? On a scale of 1 to 10, where would you position yourself in terms of your communication? On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being very low, 10 being very high. So if we look at some of the complexities around communication, if you think of a communication process, what you have is the sender, the transmission and the receiver. And if you think of a ray of white light moving through a prism, what happens is that ray of white light diffracts as it comes through the other side. Now with your communication process, it's exactly the same thing. And there are a number of things that impact on your communication. And, and I'd like to emphasize this again, communication is your key enabler. How you communicate in person, over the phone, and via social media is building or breaking your brand and you need to own it and manage it. So if we look at the communication process, what 
what you're going to see next is not an exhaustive list, but a list of some of the things that might impact and potentially distort the transmission. So here are some of the things that might impact on that message. So as you can see, communication, what we assume is so simple, actually is quite complicated. And if we take into account when we're communicating in person, we've got body language that accounts for 55% of our message. We've got tone that comes in at 38%. And we've all heard the saying, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. And then we've got words that come in at 7%. And then, excuse me, if we take into account things like listening and being truly present, what is, how, how do you operate and function in the environments that you go into? Are you truly present? How often are you speaking on the phone and sending an email to someone at the same time? How are you truly present? How often does someone come up to you wanting to talk to you and your attention flits to four or five other things? According to some research, that I have, have looked into, listening, when it comes to listening, so not the hearing from a, from a medical perspective, but listening in terms of that head chatter, the average person only hears between 25 and 50% of what you're saying because of all that chatter that's going on in your head. So if you think about the person's only hearing between 25 and 50% because they're not focusing on being truly present, what might that mean for that transmission? Then you look at personalities and that opens up a whole um, conversation that, that we could spend hours talking about and how that then plays a role in, in how people communicate, how they receive information. Now when you think body language, tone of voice and words, when you walk into an interview, 55% of your message is communicated to the panel that you or the person that you're walking into before you've even opened your mouth. So your headspace is critically important when you think about it. Your headspace is going to drive a lot of your body language. Then the tone of voice that you're using, is it going up, going down, too loud, too soft, and thinking about all those inflections and, and how you're managing your tone of voice. And then of course the words coming in at 7% in person are small, but we all know the power in framing your words and how important that is. So from a communication perspective, we need to stop and we need to think about our communication. Over the phone, it is said your voice goes up to around 82% and your words at 18%. Then of course when you go online, your words and then the tone of your words can be misinterpreted in so many different ways. Take email for example or other online forums, you have to be so careful in how you're communicating because it can be building or breaking brand. So how effective a communicator are you? How much time have you thought about how you communicate? Because we all need to stop, take a step back because this has a huge impact on how we are seen in the workplace in the environments that we operate in. It has a huge impact on our reputation, our brand and our career. I'd now like to move on to your networks and how critically important your networks are. Now think about your brand. If you have taken stock of your brand, you've got a sense of who you are, you are dressing for the environment that you're going into, you're being mindful of how you're communicating, there are three types of networks that you're taking yourself into. The first one is your personal network and you will find that you have lots of different types of personal networks that you, that, that you engage in. Some are in person and some are via social media forms. So if you think of your personal networks, you've got friends, you've got family, you've got relatives, you've got family and friend acquaintances, you've got the people that live in your neighborhood, the sports associations that you might belong to, and it's apparently around 300 people that you would have within your networks if you sat down on average and, and worked out 
who's in that circle of influence, that, that, that broader network that you have. And you might have heard of the concept of six degrees of separation. So six degrees of separation, apparently Kevin Bacon, the actor, is, um, is um, connected to pretty much everyone in the world and his philanthropic work is, is pretty well worldwide known and he is what you call a hub from a networking perspective. So if, if, you, if you think of six degrees, um, six steps away from anyone in the world, that, that's pretty powerful. Now in our own personal networks, they are the, the degrees of separation are usually a lot closer. So I know for, from my perspective in Perth, we talk about two degrees of separation because it's a much smaller environment. So who's in your personal network? Have you made a list of who's in your personal network? From an operational network, these are people that you've worked with, that you've been thrown into work with, and how you interact, communicate, and engage with these people within these networks is critically important. Because if you think of where are you at now, and then you think of where you're wanting to go to from a career perspective, you're going to be working operationally with people now, and how you engage and interact with them now has a huge impact on how you might engage and interact with them in the future, or they might move to another organization, another industry, and your brand and reputation then moves out into those environments with those people. So you've got those operational networks, so those are the, the people that you're forced into working with. You don't have a choice from an operational perspective. Personal networks, you have more choice. Although some people with family will say you don't really have a choice with family. From a strategic perspective, when you're looking at your, your strategic networks, here what we're saying is, is that you can play a strategic role in connecting people. So you might know someone in one particular area and you say to Bob over here, I really think you should meet John over here because you guys, you have a lot in common, there's some opportunities for you to potentially leverage, have some synergy, so you strategically connect to those people. Now those strategic networks are very powerful, especially as you move through your career. So if you think about strategic networking, you've got some people who actually generate a living out of strategically connecting people. Now for you as an individual, thinking about who's in my personal network, who's in my operational network, who might need to be in my strategic or do I have in a strategic network, then you think, okay, well where am I wanting to get to? And if you think about where you're wanting to get to, you've got to start building relationships now for the future. There's a great book by Harvey McKay who talks about digging the well before you're thirsty. And what this book is about, it's about building those relationships without expecting anything in return. And Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People, he talks about how you'll have more fun and success when you start helping other people get what they want to need and not focus on what you want. So if you look outward from a networking perspective to help others and you build up those relationships, then over a period of time when you need to tap into those networks for your own benefit, you've built that currency, you've built up those relationships, you can then ask for that assistance. So with networks, it's a bit like opening up a bank account. I meet you for the first time today and I open up a, a currency account, a, a, a currency account with you. And I deposit into that currency account in small ways. It could be in the office meeting at, at the coffee machine, the photocopier, it could be passing you in the corridor, it could be saying good morning, good evening, it could be sharing interesting articles, it could be sharing information. Um, at a networking event, it could be talking to someone and saving them from standing on their own. There's so many ways you build currency with people. But the danger is we, do, we can sometimes do things that can totally damage the currency that we've built. Um, Warren Buffett, who's, a, who's a, a, a phenomenal individual who has built a, a, a multi-billion dollar business in the financial financial market space, he says that it takes you 20 years to build a reputation and it takes 
five minutes to ruin it. And if you think about that, you will do things differently. And what he's talking about there is it takes a long time for you to build your reputation, build your brand, but you could do something really small and stupid which could totally, totally eradicate all that goodwill and all of that positive brand that you've developed over time. So you need to stop and think about how you interact and communicating and engaging in the networks, how you're building that currency and where are your networks, where are your personal networks, where are your operational networks, where are your strategic networks and where do they need to be, where are they now, where do they need to be, what actions in a smart way are you going to put in place to develop those networks. And speaking of networks, I'd li now like to go into social networks. When did you last Google your name? When did you last Google images with your name? Have you gone online to have a look at what's been said about you and what, what might be portrayed out there in the cloud about you? You need to own your brand and you need to have your hands firmly on the wheel of your bus brand. So when you're thinking about your social network, you may not be actively involved in social networks, but there will be information out there about you already. So you need to not put your head in, your, in the sand like an ostrich and think you're not going there. You need to own it and manage it. So when you start thinking about your social networks, it's critically important that you take into consideration what you're saying online and how you're portraying yourself online. So LinkedIn, if you had a LinkedIn profile, do you have any typos, grammar errors? Um, going back to your, your transferable skills list that we spoke about earlier, when you create your resume, your resume is your written brand that's going out to whoever you're putting it in front of and that is creating an impression of you. No different to your LinkedIn. Your LinkedIn is your online resume if you like and you need to make sure that the way that looks and feels is portraying who you are and who you want to be. So if you if you are out of work at the moment and you're, you're looking for work opportunities, you need to be you need to be thinking how do you portray who you are and your value proposition online through say for example a LinkedIn so that when people come across your name through various search engines you're putting your best foot forward. And from a LinkedIn perspective and social network perspective the photo is a must. You must have a photo but you've got to be very careful what kind of photo you have because what does the photo say about you? If I look at a photo of you, what first impression am I going to be getting about you and what kind of impact is that going to be having on your brand and thus an impact on your opportunities because of what's sitting out there. So when you look at your social network and then you think to yourself, okay, how am I managing that? There's so many areas that you could have online brands and I mean a lot of these I'm not in and on and some of them I don't even know about them and it's something I need to spend more time exploring. But the, the common ones are Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Pinlin, Pin, Interest, Tumblr and you need to be thinking very, very carefully how you go about managing your brand online. And one of the things from a career perspective is if you are looking for opportunities within the workplace and someone Googles your name and does some informal research, what might they find and how are you going to manage what they might find? Um, I've had a, I had a client who I was working with who had been through a situation where she had um, gone through a court case associated with an unfair dismissal, got reinstated and it was quite public and although she was reinstated and they found her to be in the correct, um, in the correct um, position and, and the courts filed in her favour, 
what all that information that came out online about her, every time someone Googled her name, that information came up. And she's had to be proactive in how she's managed that because from a career perspective, that has had a huge impact on opportunities to get through to conversations and discussions around career. So you need to manage your online brand. How are you communicating online through your visuals, through the words you're using, through the articles you're getting involved in, through the types of articles that you're liking and engaging and interacting on, is all building your online brand, which in today's environment is huge. Now for those of you who haven't seen um, Eric's Social Nomics 2014, it's a YouTube it's about five or six minutes long. It's called Social Nomics, and it's Social Nomics 2014. And it, it's pretty scary when you think of what's happening in the world of online. And I would have loved to have shown it to you today, but because of the way the webinar works and the delay, it's not possible to show it in a way that it runs smoothly. So again, when the information comes out to you post this webinar, there will be some links to some of the recommended um, websites and YouTubes that, that I think are fantastic. And also if you go to my website and you have a look at um, the inspiration under the resources section, the inspiration section, I've got a number of TED Talks and um, links to some YouTube videos that I think are really, really important uh, from a self-development perspective. So, so have a look at those. With your online brand and your networks, you know, when you start thinking about it from a career perspective, where, where do you need to be looking? Who do you need to be tapping into? And there are a number of ways that opportunities present themselves. And I'm just going to go back. A, a lot of opportunities present themselves from your personal networks. There are opportunities online through job, job um, posts online, LinkedIn, and through, through organizations like Seek, for example. There are a lot of opportunities for, for career progression through your operational networks, and that's people who you've worked through in the past. And from a strategic perspective, people who you know, who know someone in an area, might also create and open that door for you to get in and have a conversation and showcase who you are prior to it going out more globally. So your networks are so important for your career opportunities and as I mentioned earlier, you need to be thinking how you go about developing these networks today to build those currencies today for long term, for the, for the long term, so that you don't meet someone and, and ask them for a favour and have them look at you as though you're crazy. This slide, which is the next point of what I would like to highlight is what I call the four P's of leadership brand. So you as an individual need to manage and own your leadership brand. You are leading yourself, your career, your life journey. And when you think about that self-reflection, transferable skills, SWOT analysis and value proposition, um, those four steps that we spoke about earlier, the elements of that that come into here. So there are there are four things that we need to be considering. Purpose, the why. Simon Sinek has got a fantastic TED talk on the why. And this is so true for us in life across all aspects of life. Often we talk about the what and the how that needs to be done. But we don't stop and take a step back and think about the why we're doing it in the first instance. So the why, the how, and the what. Now, when you, if, if you're inclined to go and watch that, that TED Talk, don't get hung up in the, the apple and, and the conversation around that. Strip that back to thinking about how you communicate. And when you start with why something needs to be done and then how and what, and you have that sense of purpose in everything you do, it's pretty amazing in how that transforms you yourself. So that purpose, that vision, the mission, and the values come into that purpose and really truly understanding the why. From a people perspective, this is you investing in you. And if you transpose this into the business, you could use the same model, thinking about leadership around your teams, etc. But from a people perspective, 
you're thinking knowledge, skill and attitude. Where, where is my knowledge and my skill level at for what I'm doing now? And very importantly, where is my attitude at? If I am in a situation where my knowledge, my skill is perhaps lower than the challenge that I've been given at this point in time, I might be feeling stressed. And if I'm feeling stressed, uh, that, that's going to be happening on a, on a, on a, on a, on a normal, through a normal career progression, but staying in that stressed zone is not good because that's going to damage how people see me and damage my long-term brand and potentially my long-term career progression. So how I manage that knowledge, skill and challenge balance is entirely up to me. I need to tap into the people around me. So if I think of where am I at now based on knowledge and skill and where am I wanting to go to based on knowledge and skill, do I have any gaps that I need to tap into and work on? And then attitude, your attitude is critically important to how people see you and whether or not they're going to want to be around you. And if you think of attitude, there's a, a beautiful quote that your attitude determines your altitude. So when you're going into an environment, your attitude is going to speak volumes because if you think about it, when you front up to any situation that you go into, you are what you think, you're thinking attitude might be, th might be down, you might be thinking negative thoughts. 55% of you as you front up in person is communicating that attitude straight up. So you haven't even opened your mouth and said a word, that attitude's coming through. You front up for an interview, you front up for um, a performance development discussion, you front up to a networking opportunity that is having a huge impact on how people see you. Under that people section, you also need to understand what motivates you and what motivates you taps back into your values. And Daniel Pink has a fantastic talk on what motivates us in, and, and, and what drives us and I'd encourage you to go and have a look at that. And again, that's on my website to, to click through onto. But what motivates you is, is going to have a, a link back into how you then embrace the environment and the attitude that you have to the environment that you're going into. The third thing is your performance. And how you perform, do you, do you have a plan, a strategy for yourself and your career? And what are you doing about it to manage it and plan it? How do you manage yourself through change? We all go through that change curve when change hits us. There's going to be the classic denial, that opposition where we push back. There's going to be the exploration and then there's going to be the engagement. That's a, that's a, a change management tool and we all go through that. How do we manage ourselves through that is critically important. So when we look at the, the, the performance of ourselves and the history of our performance and the consistency within that history of our performance and how we've gone through various things, but becoming aware of this, we can say well, one of our strengths is to manage in a consistent way through change and that could be one of the strengths that you showcase um, in your SWOT analysis. So be very mindful that you will go through change curve. How you, how you get through change curve links back into knowledge, skill and attitude and also your sense of purpose and, and the values. When you understand the why of change, you understand the, um, how you might react, that has an impact on how you are seen in the environment that you're in. The final of those four P's of leadership brand is personality. And with personality, again, it's becoming self-aware of your personality type. I love Click Colors. It's a tool that's a very simple personality profiling tool that you can have a lot of fun with. But what's nice about Click Colors is that um, from a communication perspective, it gets you to think, how am I communicating? Because I think I communicate fine, but I, f I don't factor in that distortion. And therefore, the fact that my message might not be received in full, so therefore, by becoming more aware of my personality, how I might communicate, then gives me an edge when I'm going to an environment to change 
how I communicate to get the best out of whatever it is I'm trying to do, whether it be a job interview, whether it be a personal development discussion. So I'd like to expand on that just a little. Um, if you think about the the personality, the and you, if you take the whole the, the, the whole click colors concept, you've got the left side of the brain and the right side of the brain. So you've got your big picture entrepreneurial types in the, the top right. You've got your fact figure, your logic in the top left. You've got your um, your message, your process in the bottom left, and you've got the emotional people engagement in the bottom right. And with click colors from a personality perspective, if you go into an interview and you start off with a broad overview of who you are and, and your key attributes and then you give some facts, some figures, some logic and then you go into some of the processes and the how and then you talk about how you engage and, and link into people and, and manage people, that gives you that whole of personality approach to communicating. Howard Gardner has a fabulous tool called the multiple intelligence. And by becoming more aware of our strengths and, and, and how smart we are across all those areas is another thing for us to consider. So I'm, I know I've given you a huge amount of information to, to think about and um, I've got a few more slides that I'd like to take you through um, and then open up to some questions. So energy is critically important and how you manage your energy in relation to your work-life integration is important because this has a huge impact on your brand and your career. So there are four types of energy. We've got your physical energy, which represents your quantity of energy. And that's your nutrition, your fitness, your sleep and your renewal. And you need to invest in your physical energy layer because it has a huge impact on everything else that you do in life and in work. So where are you at with your physical level of energy? From an emotional energy perspective, this comes through and this is your quality of energy. So what can you do to tap into an environment where you use your strengths and you feel engaged, excited and optimistic so that you have that ability to perform at your best and not perform at average? So we want to make sure that we have our quality of energy and feel engaged. So that means making sure we're sitting in, a, in an environment, a career, a job that's, a, that, that's tapping into that. Then we've got mental energy and here it's making sure we have focus because when we try and do 10 things all at once, we actually don't do things very well and this has an impact on your brand, your career. So what are the things that I need to be focusing my energies on, get them underway and then look at the next thing. Now in life we have to juggle lots of things. So what are the balls that we are juggling that are balls that will bounce? What are the balls that we are juggling that are glass that if they did drop would have big significant consequences? And let's make sure that when we look at where we're putting our efforts and energies, we balance how we're juggling those glass versus those rubber balls and make sure we put that into our planning. The fourth is your spiritual energy and this is your energy of purpose. What are you truly passionate about? And when you're truly passionate about doing something, you're going to bring more energy to it. And how you manage your energy is really important. You can be quite critical and strategic to managing your energy. If you do the things you absolutely love, it raises your energy levels. When you do things that are challenging you, that you're procrastinating on, it brings your energy levels down. If you're thinking strategically about your natural energy cycle, if you plan your days around your energy levels, it will have a huge impact on how you're coming across. If you're a mornings person, arrange for your interviews, performance development discussions in the morning. If you're an afternoons person, arrange for them to be done in the afternoons so that you have your highest levels of energy for those types of conversations. Likewise, if you do something you really love, when your energy levels are usually lower, you can bring your energy levels up and thus have a more even keel level of energy through your work 
um, life integration. So key thing is you need to manage your brand and your brand is made up of you stopping, taking a step back and considering who you are from a self-reflection perspective, where you're going, what your skills are, truly knowing how sharp those skills are, creating that ultimate master resume with everything in it, understanding what your key strengths are, understanding your true value proposition and drilling down to your value proposition, not what you do, but the value in what you do. Asking yourself three questions. Where am I at now? Where am I going? How am I going to get there in a smart way? You need to think about managing your energy levels to get the best out of each day so that you can get the best out of you. And you need to remember that you're building brand every day of the week, online, in person, over the phone. Everything you're doing is building the brand that you would like or moving away from that brand that you would like. So when you think about those three words at the start that I asked you to reflect on, what three words would you have that reflected your brand if that's not what you want it to be, ch choose the words that you would like to reflect your brand, choose where you would like your career to go, and then put a plan of action in place. Put a plan of action. Think of three key takeaways that you could put into practice straight up and do something with. And one of the key things is to pay it forward. And what I mean by paying it forward is when you go and talk to someone about building brand from a personal and career perspective and you explain some of the concepts that you've heard here today by paying it forward, it's going to come back at you and it's going to consolidate in your mind and in your behaviours. So that in a on speed um, and in a nutshell is some of the things for you to consider about personal and career branding so that you can make sure that you work it and, and use it to your advantage within your career. Thank you very much Shirley Ann, that was great. So thank you everyone for logging on today and thank you Shirley Ann, that was fantastic. My pleasure.